One other way to uh, to handle results in REST, um, actually technically options too, but usually for uh, results is this uh, question mark operator, question mark operator, and this is a uh, it's an interesting um, interesting operator that comes after after uh, when you use like a method that uh, gives you a result, you can just uh, put this question mark after, and it will. Uh, it will tell you if uh, you know. It'll tell you, give you the the what's inside the result if it's okay, and if not, it'll uh, it'll pass back the error. So it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like doing a match statement, except for uh, it's uh, it's much more convenient uh, sometimes. And uh, I'll show you how this works. So if you remember the um, usually uh, you know results. You see result a lot when you're talking about like uh, files. You know, opening a file. Can you? Uh, can the computer open the file? Can it find it first? Uh, after it finds it, then it might try to open it. And then uh, you know, uh, every step of the way, there is like a a possible thing that can go wrong. And so you see a, a lot of uh, results for that. And because we're just looking at the playground, we're not looking at uh, we're not looking at uh, files or like uh, user input or anything. So that is why we keep on using using this uh, this parse function. So I'm going to write this in a second. So let's imagine we are parse stir, and we are going to do uh, what the what we did before, which is uh, we'll give the function a uh, you know a stir like that, and it will try to turn it into a number. And if we give it something like this. It will return an error because it doesn't know how to return that, and so uh, result is going to be you no. Know, if it works, it's going to be an i32, and then uh, here is the uh, the error type, and uh, I want to show you again how to uh, how to find it if you don't know the exact error type. So let's say let's a parsed number equals uh, input dot parse, then we use this. Uh, Turbo fish, and then we are going to specify, you know, please turn it into an i32. And instead of unwrap, and instead of doing a match, we just uh, there we go. We put a question mark there. So it's like, did you parse it right? And then it's a, it's kind of like a question for the uh, for the compiler. And uh, by the way, if you look at uh, sometimes when you when you use this, it'll talk about the um, the try trait, and the reason why it's called uh, try is because it used to uh, it used to be done with a macro called try. So try with an exclamation mark, and um, it was uh, it was so convenient that uh, that people decided let's uh, let's turn it into a question mark so we don't have to you know write try and then uh, put it inside brackets. And uh, actually, this is our first look at a uh, at making a macro. And uh, don't be afraid, but uh, we can kind of we can read a little bit. So if we uh, if we look at this uh, macro rules, that's how you make a macro. And this try macro, which became the uh, the question mark operator, uh, it basically just uh, it checks the result, and if it's okay, that sends the value. And then if it's an, an error, then it uh, you know it converts from the error, so it like gives you the uh, the error information. So that's just a small, small look at uh, how macros are made, but uh, that's how it works. So, uh, so let's see. Let's go back to our our uh, function here, and of course, uh, because we're returning a result, we have to return either an OK or an error. So we are going to say OK parsed number. And by the way, this doesn't force it to be OK. It's just uh, you know it's an enum and we're returning an enum so we have to uh, we have to choose that and of course we don't want to choose error because that'll just make it into an error right away um, so let's see now let's see if it tells us uh, what type to return so it says uh, actually let's delete this and then see if it tells us Expected type. Okay, I'm going to let's try this. Input dot parse 
I32. Let's see if it tells us now. Come on. There we go. This is uh, this is what I wanted to show you again. So it tells you uh, it is a parse int error, which is what uh, I was starting to write here. So standard num parse int error is what we want to bring in. Let's take that out, and then. Uh, so now we will return what we intended to, which is a result, and uh, i32 and a parse int error. So now that we have that, let's uh, let's parse some strings. Uh, so let's put a vec together, and uh, let's say str vec equals, and we will say vec. And it will have seven, which will not work. We will have eight, that'll work. Uh, Nine point zero, that'll work. Uh, nice, that will not work. And then uh, six thousand sixty. And then for item in stirback, uh, then we say let parsed equals parse stir of the item, and then we are going to see what we get. So it is going to print out our results. And there you go. So you can see uh, it tells us uh, this one is an error. What's the error kind? Invalid digit, invalid digit. Okay, so that is, uh, that is how it works. Now, because we're not looking at files, we can't, uh, we can't uh, Put these question marks together. If you uh, if you're checking a lot of things at the same time, the convenient the really convenient part is um, is you can you know chain a method, do some other method, give it a question mark, and then just keep on going and check like uh, you know a whole bunch of things in a single line of code. And so we are going to imagine that we'll do that by uh, let's just make it parse over and over again. So what we're going to do is. Uh, Parse number, we're going to do a, uh, first we're going to make it a U16, and then we're going to check that, and then we're going to turn that into string, because that's fun, and then, uh, then we're going to uh, parse it again, and this time we are going to parse it into a U32, and then, of course we uh, use the operator to pass on the information, and then we'll make that into a string, again, for fun. And then finally, we are going to make it into a U8 question. And then, uh, so now we are you know, doing uh, three things that uh, re can return a result, which means they can fail. And, uh, and then we're going to you know, put, our, uh, put our strings into there again and see what happens. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. this does not need a square bracket there. Uh, let's see, parse, 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 do string dot parse. There's a double period there. And there you go. So you can see, um, so right away in this, uh, in this function, we have done you know, three results, and instead of having to match every time, we do a question mark, question mark, question mark, asking the compiler if it's okay, and we put these through, and this time the uh, the last one, this will also, or this one also fails because uh, of a different reason. It is an overflow because we're trying to make a U8, and 6060 is too big for a U8. So that is how the uh, the question mark operator, or try, works.